cracking everybody welcome back to the channel as you see you guys asked for it i'm on it part two hold up it's not gonna work if i don't have my headphones on part two to pelican bay pelican bay prison horror story with that guy don't remember his name but let's get to it you know they have rules in prison i was like as long as i follow the rules i'll be all right you know just stay out the way you know and i could just do this so i go i go out to yard one day and you know i didn't know that you know things were going on there was a lot of drama going on between the others and the southsiders one of the others had called one of the southsiders the night before a wet back and so the next day he woke up when he woke up and he so this is i believe where we left off yesterday and i'll start the way i ended i don't understand how that word was thrown out and it's something didn't jump off immediately um even if it happened at night when somebody was drunk talking out of their cell first thing in the morning when the doors crack pelican bay cell feeds so there should have been yard or something it should have got off it should have cracked off immediately but you know let's let's hear this guy's story sobered up because he was drunk he tried to offer him 200 dollars and they felt disrespected and i didn't know any of this was going on i'm just out working out I just look, I'm like, the Mexicans, usually they're a little more spread out. They're all together, like in a big old ball. It's like, something's going on. And then I see them break. And, you know, they're going across the yard, walking all the way around. Like, half of them go this way, half of them go this way. And I see them walking. I'm like, where are they going? Yeah, and this was in Pelican Bay. Still, still right? Pelican Bay, yeah. And so, and then all of a sudden, they just rush us. So, and so, so before to cut you off, uh, um, one thing I, I want to say, uh, I want to ask actually what is the the race that controls Pelican? like i know there's different races but what is there's no specific race that controls the yards yeah, but, i know there's but always the like one particular one that's like has so dominant the more south folks. siders they yeah. have numbers the yeah. south side of mexican mafia they have numbers and so that's right. who they were and they were a lot more than anyone else on the yard so 80 of them they rush us and we're over there fighting we end up fighting for you know for our lives and stuff wow. and we're trying to defend ourselves and the whole time i kept telling myself i was like do not drop on the ground you drop on the ground 20 people are going to get on top of you and you might not make it they so if you drop on the ground 20 of the 80 will immediately swarm on you <laughs> you know at that point people are not just coming out there trying to you know beat you up or stab you they're trying to kill you and so they s ended up shooting one inmate in the head and that's what stopped everyone. Once that inmate got shot and he dropped to the floor, and we heard the gunshot. Then everybody stopped, right? They yeah. handcuffed me. I end up going to the hole. I'm sitting in the hole, you know, uh, on participation on a riot. And so you spend 90 days following that. They transport everybody to different prisons. So from there, they transported me to Sinella State Prison, which is another level four yard that I. W so he went. Let's recap. This individual has a 16-year sentence. Somehow, a 16-year sentence with no prior jail convictions, no prior jail time, not a gang member, just a guy. Somehow, they feel that he fits level 4 180 criteria. They housed him in the shoe because, again, for some reason, he was the most dangerous guy in the, in the bus and... They put him in the shoe, okay? Then they put him in a cell. You guys already saw it, man. But after all that, participation in a, in a riot, now he deserves to be in a, a 270 design prison. Now he's, not, he's no longer going to even be in a 180. Let's just send him down south. Let's reward him and send him to a 270 design prison. And another thing to say, too, um, I, I don't know what year he's talking about, but I know when I was in Pelican Bay, there's always a lot going on. And so a lot of times there was more than one, more than two, sometimes more than three ad sake buildings, the whole. Usually when there's a full scale riot, there's so many people involved that the cops throw everybody back in their cell and slam the yard. But they do pick a handful of guys that they feel are influential on the yard. They throw them in the hole. So apparently this is a very influ influential individual. And he was so influential that he got a lower custody uh, status after participating in a riot. I went to. It's by the border of Mexico. Oh, yeah. That, I remember that place. That place was fucking crazy. Middle yes. of nowhere. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's <laughs> in the desert. In the of nowhere. And in, in California. And, uh, you know, I go over there and I'm like, all right, you know, now I've 
been in prison about two years everything's going good and so i'm like i could do this you know i, I could just follow the same rules everything will be all right so i get a job as as a tutor i'm teaching all the inmates how to get their gds in prison right and so one of the inmates one of the southsiders you know he gets into it with the teacher one day and they're arguing and this one of them said something funny and i ended up getting uh and then I started I started laughing naturally, right? I started laughing and so naturally I didn't mean to, you know, disrespect him or any way like that, but it just happens natural reaction. So mm -hmm. afterwards when we left the classroom, the the South Sider inmate came up to me. He was like, Look, man, why were you laughing when I was arguing with that teacher? I said, Look, if you feel offended, you know, I didn't mean to offend you. I was like, But it's a natural reaction. Right. He was like, Oh man, we got a problem now and this now I was like, What do you mean we got a problem? So he starts getting loud and you know and, and we both started getting loud and so his friends started pulling him away and I, I go in the building and I, I instantly reach out to the Hispanic rep right and I go up to him and I'm like look man I, I'm, I've been cool with you guys I've you know respect you guys had respect for me and I've had respect for you guys and so one of your you know this is what happened and so he was like don't worry we'll take care of it so he goes and talks to his you know shot callers and they all talk about it and then he comes back to my door he's like look it's a dead issue it's done you know nothing's gonna happen moving forward from this point so I'm like, all right, the next day I go to work just like regular, right? I'm at work and I'm just sitting on my desk and I see this inmate come in and he goes motions to me like, like come to the bathroom, right? I'm like, okay. So I get up. I'm like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? I'm going to get into a fight with him one-on-one, -on -one, right? Mm -hmm. I come to the hallway. He's like, me and you going to fight one-on-one. -on -one. I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I didn't know that in prison with other races, there's no such thing as one-on-one. -on -one. So as I'm walking, I'll, I'll turn around and one of his friends is there. I'm like, what, what is this? He goes, oh, no, I'm just there to watch the door so you guys can, you know, handle your business. I was like, all right. So he goes all right. In the first and I follow him. As soon as I go in the bathroom, I see him reach in his pocket. Mm. I'm like, oh, this is okay. This is what's going on. So he must have something, right? Yeah. So at that point, it's too late. I'm already in the bathroom. So as soon as I see him reach in his pocket, I just, I just try to swing on him, right? So I, I, I swung on him and I see him pull his hand out, his right hand out. And he swings on me really wild, and I tried to move my face away, and he nicks me right here. And as he did, I looked at his hand, and he had a knife in his hand, a shank in his hand. So I just rushed his hand, and I grabbed his hand with two hands. I was like, there's no way I'm going to let this man keep doing this, right? Cause, so I grabbed his hand with my left hand, and I just started hitting him. As I'm hitting him, his friend runs in the bathroom, and he starts hitting me from the back of my head, right? And we're just in there. I'm just holding this knife with dear life. I'm like, nope, yeah. I got I to gotta make sure this happens. So the teacher, one of the teachers, she hears commotion in the bathroom, and she comes out. She hits the alarm. The COs come in there, pepper spray us in there. And um, we all get down. They separate us, right? My face is bleeding. I'm like, man, I can't believe this happened. This guy is... Amazing. He's been in so much stuff. He's been DP'd, been in riots, all this stuff, man. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to make of it. Like, is this... I mean, I don't know the guy, but it just seems very narcissistic to um, tell these stories the way they're being told that are like... I don't, I don't, I, it's just so foreign to me, like, so he's able to fight off two guys the whole time his left hand never got off of the guy's right hand, so he's got one guy with two hands free, the other guy with one hand free, he's only got one hand, and he was able to defend himself. Knowing prison tactics the way I do, I don't see how... He would have been uh, uh, able to stay on his feet. You take a man off his feet, he loses the power in his hands. That's all I'm going to say. So I go to the hole and I learn a valuable lesson. There's no one-on-ones in prison right. amongst other races. There's no such thing, right? And so when that happened, you know, from there... I, I had really realized, I was like, this is going to be one of those situations where it's going to be, you know, I'm going to have to be on my toes about every little thing. I'm going to have to learn more than what I already know. Right. So they take me to the hole. I get transferred to Pleasant Valley State Prison, you know. So I end up going over there. Pleasant. Every time he gets into something, he goes to a, a prison that's known to be less violent than the last one he was in. 
Cali was good to me. You know, it was one it of was those pleasure. It was right. Pleasure. It, it was. It was. You know, it's by Fresno, yeah. so I, I end up going over there. That's what you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. So so I, I don't think any prison is pleasant. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I end up going over there. Right. Immediately, right when I get there, they approach me. Right. Yeah, the CEOs they watch us and they approach me and they're like, Hey, look, we like your demeanor. Do you want to work? Uh, uh, you know, for for uh, uh, for the medical. Basically. So the uh, Pleasant Valley, there's no job assignment office. It's just COs walking around and just enjoying uh, inmates' demeanor. Oh, he has a great demeanor. I'm just going to give him a job. That sounds about right. Level four, it's hard to get a job, man. Um, but apparently this guy, you know, everywhere he went, he was able to get a job, you know. And like I said, get involved and um, go to a, a less violent prison every time. Basically, to be a porter over there in medical, I was like, yeah, I don't mind being a porter in medical. He was like, yeah. Well, so what is a porter? Porter is basically you just keep up the up uh, upkeeping of, of okay, any okay. any location where they put you as a porter. So you're just gotcha, doing the gotcha, cleaning gotcha. and things like that. So I go in there and it's a bunch of nurses working there. The CEO was so laid back, he would just leave and leave me in there, you know. And all these nurses are walking around. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna be around some women. It's not a big deal, right? So, so you know, beyond that, I ended up. Um, uh, you know, starting a relationship with a nurse over there. And her and I, we had a six month long relationship. <laughs> and within that relationship. <laughs> what do you mean a relationship? Hold on. So yeah, yeah, elaborate man. further. You can, you can so, crack, you can crack so, some. So what happened is, you know, I knew this going into that prison that if uh, going into any prison, you don't talk to women, the women pick you. They're going to approach you. And so that's what happened. Yeah. I was just doing my job. And she came up to me one day. She was like, can I ask you a question? Do you know anything about dreams? I was like, uh, not really. She was dreams. Like, yeah. She's she was like, <laughs> she was like the reason why I ask is the reason why I dreams? ask is that mm -hmm. I can't stop dreaming about you. I was like, wow, she's trying to ah. throw some pickup lines. At <laughs> so your yeah, so for she, sure. That and, was, it, and it worked. And it worked. I'm lonely. And it worked. I don't have anyone. You know what I mean? Well, so I was vulnerable. You know, and she was an attractive woman. And so she's an attractive nurse. So we started a relationship. Right. She would open the bathroom for me to oh, clean staff bathroom. We would both go in there for six months we're doing this we ended up getting caught by one of her co-workers Damn. and so she ended up quitting her job and i ended up going to the hole from the hole they transported me to a different prison to a salinas valley okay. i go to salinas valley and i realized salinas valley the yard they put me on sea yard they call it baby iraq everyone's at war at in that prison so at that time i had just bought a cell phone it was fifteen hundred dollars for the cell phone i got it and my celly's in there with me my celly's an og and i get a text message right and it says hey tomorrow the bloods and the crips are gonna go at it my celly he's a muslim but he used to be a blood but he's a muslim so i ask him i'm like hey is this gonna affect you he's like no i'm older all these guys they know me they don't care about me you know it's okay you know uh, uh they just want to live their life and i want to live my life they know i don't get involved in the gang lifestyle i was like all right so I'm, I'm just laughing because this dude how many years in does he have and he still has to con continue to ask everybody around him questions he doesn't know anything about anything <laughs> oh man next day i wake up they're releasing us for yard and we're in first cell to get released and my celly's like put the phone away and let's go to yard i was like yeah so i'll start putting my phone away in my mattress my celly puts the shoes on goes outside the mattress for me and i start putting my shoes on and uh as i'm putting my shoes on i see the the rest of the door is open and i hear the ceo yelling get down get down get down so i'm like what is this so i run out of my cell when i ran out i see my celly he had one guy like this and another guy's punching on him and it was some crips that were jumped on him and this is my celly so I can't let this man, and he's my brother, so I can't let this man be there. So I jump in, and I start fighting Absolutely. the other guy. So they're shooting block guns at us, come over there, pepper spray us, and we're just fighting. you know. And you're at that point, when you get pepper sprayed, you're trying to hold your breath. Because if you take a breath, you, it's going to burn. And right. so I'm, I, I just grabbed onto one last yeah. breath, and I just was like, I'm just going to you know, do whatever sure. I can. And so anyhow, they separated us. They ended up finding out that, you know, we we went to the hole and 18 other people from that ride ended up going to the hole i'm right. sitting in the hole and 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 the associate warden is like look man we're gonna get it, get rid of everybody that was involved in that riot he was <laughs> like uh you're getting expedited i was like what does expedited mean he was like, uh, expedited. <laughs> so he came out of the cell and there was his sally with two dudes on him and he jumped in and then next you know it was 18 people involved and out of all 18 this is the man this is the, the guy that can't figure out what the hell is going on around him at any time. Any given time, he doesn't know what's going on. He needs to ask somebody what's going on. <clears throat> but he's the one that's always, uh, 
he got to go. You know, he's he needs to be moved. He is a threat to the safety and security of the institution every time. <laughs> it means that the first bus that's leaving this morning, you're going to be on it. I was like, where's the first bus going? He was like, I don't know. You'll find out. I was like, all right, well, let's hope it's going somewhere, somewhere nicer than this place. Nothing can be worse. So I'm sitting there, right? And as I'm as I'm sitting in 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 my cell waiting for this bus to come, the CEO comes. He's like, "Hey man, pack up. You're going back to Pelican Bay." I was like, "No way again." Wait, 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 wait. This doesn't make sense. Uh, I mean, lot, none of it does. But I riot. He was like, uh, "You're getting expedited." I was like, "What does expedited mean?" He was like, "Expedited means that the first bus that's leaving this morning, you're gonna be on it." I was like, "What?" Why does he still have his property? That's what I wanted to hear. Why does he still have his property? Where's the first bus going? He was like, I don't know. You'll find out. I was like, all right, well, let's hope it's going somewhere somewhere nicer than this place. Nothing can be worse. So I'm sitting there, right? And as I'm as I'm sitting in, 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 in my cell waiting for this bus to come, the CEO comes. He's like, hey, man, pack up. You're going back to Pelican. Why does he still have his property? If he's on the transfer list and they already knew it, they would have packed, transpacked him inventoried all this stuff he's gonna sign off to make sure that they inventoried everything but apparently i then i mean i guess everybody knows he doesn't know anything about anything just tell him what to do and he'll say okay well i hope it's a better place and i'll just follow the rules <laughs> bay i was like no way again he's like yeah you're going back to pelican bay and they're taking you out of here uh and you're going to be in pelican bay so they transport me all the way back to pelican bay i go back to the same yard I see the same people four or five years later that are still there, miserable, you know, still stay there. So I made it a point to myself to be like, you know what, I got to try to see if I can change something about this situation to try to try to do better to where actually I can get a transfer for the first time during my incarceration without being an adverse transfer, you know, to where they can be like, look, we're going to send you somewhere nicer. So for six, seven months, I kept hammering my counselor, telling them, look, I need to go somewhere better, closer to my family in L.A. So finally it worked. Over mm -hmm. a year later, they transported me to Lancaster State Prison. Huh? Anyways, in my experience, again, I can only speak from my experience. There were two prisons where it was known. If you land there, you will never get a transfer. Unless you stab somebody and go to the hole, go to the shoe. Do your shoe term and get the transfer from the shoe. Pelican Bay and High Desert. Now, what they would do is, now, I, I mean, there might be other people that were there and never got a write-up or something, and maybe miraculously they got a transfer, but I never saw people transfer, a non-adverse transfer out of Pelican Bay. Um, now, what Pelican Bay and High Desert did have was a, a basically an understanding between those two prisons. Those were pretty much considered the worst of the worst. So... They would get a handful of dudes from High Desert that were complete knuckleheads they wanted to get rid of, and they would swap them with the knuckleheads from Pelican Bay. That did happen. Um, but, you know, this is a first for me. I, I don't know anybody that, that got non-adverse transfers from, from the Bay. I don't, I don't recall it, not while I was there. Which I was closer to my family. In Lancaster, I was like, you know what? I got to try to do do better for my family, better for myself. So I joined Again. college. I started attending college. I was like, you know, I'm doing this time and it's just making my time worse. I'm, I'm catching time. I'm not just doing time. Every time I get in trouble, I get a write up and it's adding time to my sentence. So I'm sitting in, in Lancaster State Prison, right? And one day I'm doing my college work on my desk and my neighbors, they're just beating on the wall, like just making music. They're just beating on the wall, right? I'm like, man, what's up with this? And it's rattling my desk. So just really politely, I just I just go on, on on the vent, which other cells are connected to. I was like, excuse me, neighbor, this is your neighbor. I was like, I'm asking you guys if you guys can stop beating on the wall. I'm trying to do my college work, and it's rattling my desk, just like that, really politely. And the guy goes, man, what? We do whatever we want to do. You know, nobody tells me. You know what I'm thinking? How did he go back to a 270? I, I don't know. You got to... Well, he never got a shoe term. All the stuff he's been in, I don't know. My brain is kind of slow today. That's what to do in ourselves. Like, look, I'm not trying to disrespect you guys. I'm just telling you guys if you guys can please be considerate. It's like, nah, well, if you got a problem, we could get, get down. Uh -huh. So anybody that's done prison time, 
when you say yeah. get down, that means that yeah. you know we could we could, we could we could basically get into a fight. What's up? What do you want to yeah, do? And at that point, you challenge your man's yeah. man. You you challenged me. So yeah, at that sure. at that time, I knew that other people in other cells that were connected, everyone heard, every race heard, everyone heard. I was like, he's made that threat. Right. He's crossed the line of no return. So I knew that dinner time was coming and the cell doors were going to open. My cell door was before theirs. So I knew that my cell door was going to open 10 seconds before their cell. Ten. Maybe eight seconds before maybe their eight. cell. So I was like, I got to do something. There's two of them and it's one of me. So I can't fight them on the tier. It's going to happen. So I put my shoes on. I time. I'm just sitting. <laughs> Normally, the thing you want is to be on the tier. When you're in the cell and you have two people on you, you're you can be boxed in and, and cornered pretty damn quick so his thinking is is backwards than what i've known you get out on the tier you're able to see both of them you're able to move around do they have stuff on their hands don't they in the cell you don't get time they're on you like that and there's nowhere to go so but i mean this is his story sitting on my toilet waiting dinner time comes the cell door opens i was like i gotta go in there and fight in their cell i cannot allow them to jump me on the tier so cell door opens i rush out and as soon as their cell door opens i rush in their cell and we start getting into a, we got into a fight inside the cell we're fighting in there and so the ceos run in there they see us they pepper spray us throw me in the hole i go in the hole and from that point you know they end up transporting me to corcoran state prison once I arrived at Corcoran, like at that point, I was like, I knew I was like, something has to change. Like, I can't keep catching this. Everywhere this guy goes, something just has to change. I can't keep doing this. I got to be a better person. I got to do more for my family, be there for my family. I know he's not going to say this whole whole thing again. Time. I've caught 937 days on my sentence. Oh, dear Lord. From just like, continuously messing up. Oh, dear so Lord. So I just started taking a much harder route, much unpopular route in prison, which was trying to follow the path where, you know, it's it's unpopular because everyone expects you to be a gang member, a drug dealer, and just just basically someone who just doesn't care about. And his you're life. absolutely right. I feel like that's the populace also that the general media pumps out there. Like, hey, when you go to prison, make populace. sure you fight the first person that you see. Make no. sure you like you know they put that in people's brains. So when no. people that have never been to prison end up going in there, they act up in the no. first couple of years, and they're adding on years to their sentence every time they're going and doing shit. Like that knife situation that you had, I'm pretty sure if it was somebody else in the street, they'd probably try to hide it and then try to keep it for themselves as protection and then right, catch right. another, like, what is that, four or five years, right, right. for a knife charge? Uh, so sure. so the, the, the thing was, once I got to Corcoran, I started taking my education much more seriously. I joined a group. I became a chairman of a group called Reach where they would bring in at-risk youth, and I would be, you know, we would be diverting youth from the life of crime and what we went through trying to, you know, save some youngsters from actually following our path. And it was, it's going great for us. Everything is good, you know. And, you know, one day I just come out to yard and I just see, you know, two dudes fighting on the yard and they're two different race. I'm like, what is this? And as soon as I see that, I see a 18 people run this way. I see oh. 20 people run this way. Oh. I see 30 people run this way. And everyone. Ah, again. This is always for me, for my ears and my mind, when people have exact numbers coming from different locations, exact numbers, that's not, how, how did he count them? How did, how did you know, you know, it'd be different. He said, man, I saw a gang of fools coming from here, coming from there, coming from there. They were everywhere. Like if it happened, that's what you, right? But especially when it's on like but what was the numbers again i think that's the number to his 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 lock or something that's probably why he knows that number and you know one day i just come out to yard and i just see you know two dudes fighting on the yard and they're two different race i'm like what is this what is this i see that i see a 18 people run this way i see 20 people run this way i see 30 people run this way, and everyone's just swinging at each other yeah. and so another riot kicks off whether i'm part of it or not and this was at corcoran so at Co corcoran state okay. prison so we get into a huge riot right mm -hmm. the whole yard is just fighting everyone's fighting again so here i am fighting again they separate you by the races and then you're sitting in, in the chow hall handcuff and they make you strip out and they check you for marks if you have any type of marks on you anywhere on your hands anywhere you're going to the hole oh, you yeah. participated right. in the right if you don't you're going back to your cell yeah. at that time i had one bruise on my back right and the nurse goes yep he's got a bruise so they send me to the hole i go to the hole and you know from there i think i hit the lowest point of my life 
where I went through so much depression. I'm sitting in the hole and now they just doubled me up, you know, because I've had other write-ups and other, other whole time that I had done. I'm just sitting in the hole pending an investigation, you know, three months go by, six months go by, nine months go by. For I'm what? I'm there waiting to get transferred, right? And so at that point I made the decision to myself. I was like, look, <sighs> I have to stop getting involved in this stuff. Like, what, what do I gotta do? Like, my <laughs> luck couldn't have been worse. There's guys that are out there fighting fires and they're still involved in the gang life and everything and, and drug dealing and everything. And I'm not. Who's fighting fires? This was sent there involved in gang wars. Everywhere he goes, he's the, he's the man that's involved. This dude's been in more riots than anybody. Gee, God. I'm just trying to go to college and I'm trying to fix my life. And I'm stuck on level four and it's been 12 years now. I'm just stuck on this level four. <laughs> So finally, I ended up getting out of there, going to a different prison, to Jamestown. And once I arrived over there, I just, you know, made what? Jamestown's like a level two. Right? I, like I don't even honestly don't even know what Jamestown is. Isn't Jamestown like a level two slash zero? Twelve years in, six hundred and seventy-two riots that he's participated in. He beat everybody up. But he's always in college. He's he, he's in college. They give him a job working with the females. Like all the job assignments he have are good guy. <laughs> are like what do they call positions of trust, right? He gets he keeps getting what they call and well not all of them, but he's been given jobs that are considered positions of trust. But yet he's always involved in riots. Now after another riot. And he sat in the hole forever because they had to make sure he was, you know, not one of the X-Men or something. I, I don't know. Then they sent him to, like, one of the lowest level prisons in the state. If there's a riot there. <laughs> I made a commitment to myself that this was going to uh, be my Okay. I finished my college degrees. I got two different college degrees, sociology and psychology. Became certified as a barber, certified as a service dog trainer. I got uh, certified as a drug and alcohol counselor. I did 1,400 hours of drug and alcohol counseling. Uh, one of the best programs I took was Word and Excel program that they offer in a lot of the prisons. That was the best uh, program that I took that because now that I do own my own. Somebody who did the drug and alcohol counseling. SAP program, right? SAP, Substance Abuse Program. Somebody that's done that through the CDC, do me a favor, let me know how long it takes. I don't know, but he got every certificate under the sun in different vocations. That I, I don't know if the math adds up, right? Like, uh. on business, it's very helpful to keep up with the technology. And so I was able to successfully come out after 15 years from Jamestown State Prison and life has just been amazing for me that I don't have to worry about anything else. Exactly. And on that note, before we move on to Ayan's story, I want to say that the business that he owns, you want to talk about what that yeah, is? Since so we're called Unguarded Podcast. Right. So it is called Unguarded Podcast. I came home and I actually uh, became an owner of a security company. Uh, it's called iSecure Pro. You can find us online at i-secure pro. Or you can email me if you ever need any type of guards, guards, armed or unarmed guards. Uh, you know, whatever your ne security needs are, we actually provide security to a lot of celebrities and a lot of uh, uh, business businesses all, all around uh, Los Angeles and San Diego area. Uh, my personal email is ray at i-securepro.com. We'll put ray. that on the description of the video. Absolutely. There you guys go. And, uh, uh, it's kind of funny how we're called Unguarded Podcast, but if you do want to get guarded, you can give always us a, hit up Rahad. Give us a give yeah. us an that email. That was kind of funny. Got you. That was kind of funny. We got you on that, all right? All right. Ayan, I want to hear your story. No, no, I just want to say something real quick. Oh, here we go. A lot of, is it true a lot of prisons are going out of business? A lot of prisoners? Prisons. Are oh, going prisons. Prison. prisons. They, they say that they are, but that's actually not true. They had put out a lot of rumors that they're saying that they're releasing, but they figure out ways. So every time that they say that uh, we're going to release a bunch of prisoners because we changed this law, they're going to make a counter counter uh, law that's going to counter that completely, right? Mm -hmm. So there was times where, where they were releasing inmates, and we had CEOs come to us and be like, oh, um, yeah, the Mexicans are going to try to get you guys and purposely trying to steer the pot so a riot will kick off and we would catch more time and so that way because it's not in their in their best uh best interest to release inmates there's a lot of seals that watch 
my channel and all these other channels. There you guys go. You guys are the puppet masters. Nobody on the yard is smart enough to figure out that you guys are starting it. <laughs> this, hey, this whole time in prison, he never knew what was going on. Now he has answers of what was really going on. <laughs> but anyways, I guess this is it with him. And we're going to uh, weaken at Bernie. Somebody in the comments called this individual over here weaken at Bernie's. But he's moving around. He's waking up. So apparently he's next. I don't know if you guys actually wanted me to do a story on him. I think it seems like everybody wanted me to do a story on this guy. I don't remember his name. Uh, he doesn't have it on top. But there you guys have it. That was part two. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, everybody, please be safe. Be smart. And tell the ones you love that you love them. I'm out.